Last adrenal cortex hormones are what we call the gonadocorticoids. And the gonadocorticoids are hormones that are similar to the ones that come from the gonads, pretty much the male gonads, um, but they are from the adrenal cortex. Um, and these are produced from the adrenal cortex in males and females in similar quantities, similar concentrations. So they are produced in both males and females from the adrenal cortex. And it's these two right here, DHEA and androstenedione, okay, or androstenedione. Um, these are the weaker version of these two. So it's kind of like weak sauce, weak version of the male sex hormones. Remember that they can be converted to estrogen by other tissues, right? Okay. And interestingly, these two right here that come from the adrenal cortex are largely responsible for the sex drive in women and women because sex drive is primarily due to androgens in both sexes but males have so much gonadal androgen that this is just kind of nothing com comparably and um, so it seems as if the effect of DHEA and androstenedione from the uh, adrenal cortex is almost completely masked by gonadal steroids in males. But in females, this is primarily where your sex drive comes from, which is interesting. Um, I won't hold you responsible for the regulatory mechanism for gonadocorticoids. Um, I do want to tell you that the, and I'll just go ahead and cover this one right now, uh, the precocial puberty that we talked about back in the gonad videos, um, that can also happen because something is wrong with your adrenal cortex and it can happen in boys um, because your adrenal cortex gets overactive and causes too many of these too young and it can happen in girls in which these get produced and then get pushed into estrogens and so you can have precocial puberty because of something wrong with the gonads or something wrong with the adrenal cortex okay um and then, um, as far as the chemical class of hormones, all of these adrenal cortex hormones, like I said before, are steroids, but you also have to put a little bit more information about them. So with the adrenal cortex, I categorize them for you as the glucocorticoids right here, right, cortisol and corticosterone. The mineral corticoids right there goes aldosterone. The gonadocorticoids right there goes DHEA and androstenedione, and those are all um, steroids. That's their chemical class, just to make sure that that's clear, clear. And I know nobody likes these words, but they're used all the time in clinical um, settings, so you got to know them. Okay, um, now, um, Last thing um, on adrenal cortex is just a couple of disorders that we haven't talked about before. So let's talk about Addison's disease and Cushing's C syndrome or disease, which are kind of different, but I won't hold you responsible for it. Okay, so with Addis Addison's versus Cushing's, first off, let's talk about what causes each one of them. Addison's disease is too little hyposecretion of cortisol and aldosterone. So I just want to show you that generally speaking, if you mess with your glucocorticoids, you will get a, you'll also mess with your mineral corticoid. Usually these are messed up first and then it causes a problem, ugh, causes a problem with that one. So the glucocorticoids that causes a problem with the mineral corticoids. So with, for instance, um, Addison's, it's going to be hyposecretion of glucocorticoids that also impacts the mineral corticoids. And what that will do, if you do not have enough of this one, I want you to think it through. Remember that these two were primarily about increasing circulating nutrient levels, really important during stress and sleep, sickness, and all of that kind of stuff. So with Addison's disease, you're going to have hyposecretion of that which means um, hopefully it doesn't surprise you that you're actually going to get um, you're going to get hypoglycemia. A lot of times you'll get weight loss associated with it. You can get low blood pressure associated with it. 
all kinds of other symptoms, including the strange symptom of hyperpigmentation. So strangely, it decreases the nutrient availability in most places, but it actually causes some stimulation of your melanocytes. So a lot of times you have this hyperpigmentation that shows up, kind of looks like you're, you've got like sun damage on your skin, but it also shows up in like the creases of your hands. So this is a woman with the hyperpigmentation. And this is a woman for control to show you what it normally looks like. And then this is the same woman as this post-treatment after she was treated adequately. Um, and this one has some historical significance because arguably one of our more handsome U.S. presidents um, looked very, very ruddy and tan in part because he sailed boats a lot, but um, also because he actually was diagnosed with Addison's disease um, and he had the hyperpigmentation associated with that. So that's Addison's disease, um, hyposecretion of cortisol and also therefore aldosterone. A lot of times weight loss and difficult maintain, difficulty maintaining your weight comes with that. Um, and then Cushing's syndrome and Cushing's disease, which are slightly different, but I won't make you hold the, tell the difference, um, is the opposite problem. It's hypersecretion of gluc glucocorticoids, which will eventually impact your mineral corticoids. It has all kinds of things that go on. If you've got too much of it, first off, you're constantly going to be breaking down your uh, nutrient stores. So um, breaking down your nutrient stores and dumping them into your bloodstream. Um, and you're also, that's because of the sugars. So you're dumping those into your bloodstream. That can lead to type 2 diabetes and often does. Um, it also leads to muscle wasting because you are releasing so much of this that you will start breaking down your muscle mass, which will drop your metabolism, which will make you gain weight even faster. Um, so typically speaking, relatively thin extremities and most of your weight gain right around the middle. And then add to that a whole bunch of water retention because of the aldosterone causing sodium retention, okay? And a whole bunch of other things. This water retention can cause this moon face. So I'll show you a couple of different pictures. Usually you gain weight so quickly, quickly that they get this these striae, which are these really, really dramatic um, stretch marks. And you, do you see this moon face associated with it? So um, hyperglycemia, type 2 diabetes, muscle wasting, unusual body fat deposition. And by unusual body fat deposition, um, not only is it all around the trunk primarily, but strangely, a lot of times you get this buffalo hump in which you have this body fat deposition right between the shoulder blades, which seems really, really strange. So um, this one is really interesting, especially with its relationship to type 2 diabetes. And that is Cushing's syndrome. Cushing's disease is a little different, but it's similar. Um, okay. And the only other thing is the assignment to make sure that you've got all of these and their hormones filled in on your endocrine table. And then we are finished with the adrenal cortex until we go back into stress at the end, which will reinforce all of this.